More freedom on the way from midnight. A new travel limit, hairdressers can reopen and golf is back. But many other restrictions remain. Pubs, restaurants and retailers left waiting to reopen as frustration continues. A twist in the trans-Tasman bubble leads to more confusion. Jacinda Ardern's massive election win thanks to her pandemic management. And spirits lifted with an all-Victorian AFL grand final as we count down to a virtual Brownlow. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Peter Mitchell starts now. Good evening. Melbourne is just six hours away from taking a step out of lockdown with restrictions set to ease at midnight. The new exit plan extends the five-kilometre travel limit, allows bigger social gatherings and means that hairdressers can finally reopen. But grand final parties are banned and there's little relief for business. After 14 weeks in lockdown, we've finally earned some more freedoms. Victorians have done an amazing job over recent weeks and months. 74 days ago, we had 725 cases. Today, just two and no new deaths. It means for the first time, our 14-day average has dropped below eight. The Victorians are amazing. They've probably made an achievement that I haven't witnessed um, across the world. Uh, this is quite remarkable. Now some of our most onerous rules have been axed. From midnight tonight, the 5K rule is gone, replaced by a new 25 kilometre limit. Outdoor gatherings now jump to 10 people from two households and there's no time limit on being outside. Tomorrow, hairdressers will reopen, as will skate parks. Golf and tennis are back on and auctions can resume. But most other small businesses will remain shut. Every person in business who is is not pleased, well, these are not, no one's, no one's enjoying this. It's not like we have made a decision and we had all these perfectly equal options. And on grand final day, there'll be no crowds, live sites or house parties. And no barbecue with friends on that day or any day is worth giving everything we've built back. In two weeks, the stay-at-home rule will finally be gone and you can have one family visit a day. Shops can reopen, as can cafes and restaurants with limited numbers. Beauty services are also allowed. Contact sport for kids will be back on and non-contact for adults. But those changes could be sooner. There is some optimism, a confidence even, that if things continue this week as they have the last five days, uh, we may be able to bring that forward. The rest of the roadmap remains as it was, meaning even in regional Victoria, gyms stay closed until late November. But the Premier has abandoned the five case a day average for getting out of lockdown. And now he's admitted that those were just wrong, that they were unattainable and unachievable and unnecessary. The changes go further for regional Victoria. From midnight, two visitors plus kids are allowed in the home. Outdoor dining limits rise to 70 with 40 inside and whole households can visit loved ones in care. With opening up comes risk. We remain nervous, but I'm confident we're going in the right direction. It's, it's really clear that we've gone in the right direction for, for several weeks. And even as the Premier was announcing easing some restrictions, news came through of another case in Kilmore, a staff member at a local bakery. And we still have 15 mystery cases from the past two weeks. If we were just to open up widely now, there's a real chance it could blow back up at us. So I think two weeks to see what happens with these modest openings and then aiming for 1 November makes good sense to me. For now, masks remain compulsory, but from Wednesday, people in Melbourne can visit their properties in regional Victoria for fire or flood prevention if they have a permit from their council. This is not an invitation to go and have a couple of days in regional Victoria. The so-called ring of steel between Melbourne and regional Victoria will stay until at least next month. In fact, police will be checking even more drivers, but the Premier hopes it'll be gone in time for the festive season. I'd like to have a situation by Christmas where people can travel much more freely. And with Richmond playing Geelong in next week's AFL Grand Final, you'd normally expect Swan Street to be a mass of Tigers fans and even a hub of post-match celebrations. Instead, this year, it'll be virtually empty. The pubs will be closed, there'll be no big crowds and we'll have police patrolling to make sure COVID rules aren't being broken. One of the biggest days of the year will be virtually unrecognisable. Mitch. Laura Irving in Tigerland, thank you.
This reworked roadmap out of lockdown has left hotel owners bitterly disappointed, warning that even when they can open, crowd limits will make it impossible to break even. But there's relief for some cafe and restaurant owners, now getting ready to reopen in a fortnight, possibly sooner. Hope turns to relief. So hospitality, a maximum of 20 people inside and 50 people outside. Oh, my God! Yes! 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 City restaurateur Katerina Borsato finally gets some good news. I'm shocked. That's not what we were expecting. In Melbourne, hospitality from November 2 or maybe sooner, a maximum of 20 per venue indoors with a density limit. Outside is capped at 50 with a looser density limit. For small business, I cannot begin to tell you what that will mean. That, that can mean the difference between survival and actually going down. Cafes relieved they can dust off their seats and tables. Pressure now on councils to fast track permit approvals for outside dining. Oh, it's a fantastic news and this is something we've been waiting for a very long time so I'm hoping that we're going to get a customers coming in and we're going to be able to actually remember how to serve them. But at bigger venues like pubs, frustration is building. This is just an absolute disgrace. We're COVID safe, we are ready to open. We're not greedy people, we just need to be able to open in a viable manner. Publican Peter Appleby fears if he reopens it will just deepen his debt. 20 people inside doesn't pay the bills, 50 people outside, that's all wonderful. We live in Melbourne, it rains, there's no one to cover. What happens then? Send them all home? We're bitterly disappointed as an industry. We we're really expecting to get open this week and get operational in a COVID safe way. Hotels are losing between ten and $25,000 a week. More than 60% are on the brink of collapse. Some venues would be actually better off closed than open under those capacities, so we won't actually see venues reopening. I could probably have 150 people spread out over five rooms in a very, very safe environment, and that would be one person per four square metres. There is no doubt that we say health and safety first. We're not denying that, but small business has been totally crushed. Here at the Railway Club Hotel in Melbourne, the countdown is on. Inside in their dining room, soon they'll be able to have 20 customers back enjoying their steaks. And outside, they are getting ready as well. They have installed these very impressive pods on the street so it protects people from the weather. They will be able to have 50 people out here on the street. The state government says that staff will be able to return to hospitality four days in advance of reopening, Mitch, and welcoming their clients back, which is, uh, they haven't done for almost four months. Paul Dowsley at Port Melbourne, thank you. The Prime Minister, Federal Treasurer and Health Minister have all urged a rethink on plans to delay the reopening of most Melbourne businesses. Jodie Lee is across developments and Jodie, they say it is safe to return to work. Mitch, Scott Morrison and his two most senior Victorian ministers say they sympathise with struggling business owners here in Victoria. They say the state's three-day rolling average is now low enough to bring forward the proposed date of the 2nd of November. That's when re the retail sector is due to reopen, while hairdressers like this one here in South Melbourne can begin trading from tomorrow. Joe Cordella had expected some relief, but wasn't quite prepared to reopen his barber shop tomorrow. He's done the sensible thing and used his common sense, and um, I'm excited to see all our clients, all the staff. Sorry, I've got to get this. <laughs> After being shut since July, he spent this afternoon preparing for an influx of overdue clients, promising to work right through Friday's public holiday to fit them all in. I think I'll be working uh, every day, every day next week, for the next few weeks actually. Also given the green light to open tomorrow, non-essential outdoor home repairs, house painting, car washes and pool cleaning. But it will be another 14 days before customers can browse the shelves again at a Volca Hill bookshop. It's all non-contact sales, um, so we've been taking a lot of online orders. The retail sector hopeful the date will be brought forward to kickstart the economy. We encourage every Victorian to do the right thing over the next week so the Premier stands up next Sunday and announces business that will reopen. Businesses also desperate for more time for on-site preparation. They currently have just four days before doors open. It's a mammoth task and undertaking for all the Victorian stores to convert to summer and Christmas in a very short period of time. 
there was no good news for the fitness industry. Drew Westfield has set up a gym in an outdoor car park but can still only accommodate two clients per trainer. It's not like we're asking for the floodgates to be open. We're asking for our uh, studios to be open so people can come into a safe environment. Ten strangers can gather though at an outdoor auction. We all know the role uh, the health and fitness industry have on uh, improving people's mental health. A delicate balance the government is still trying to strike. Jody Lee, Seven News. The political fight over the trans-Tasman travel bubble is deepening. It's been revealed 55 New Zealanders flew into Melbourne two days ago, much more than the 17 that were first reported. Landing in Sydney and into a state of confusion. I'm originally trying to get to Melbourne, now I'm going to have to wait here for a month or so, um, which wasn't the plan. Anger over where New Zealand visitors are allowed to travel now made worse by a standoff between the Victorian and the federal governments. We can't have people just wandering into the place from another country. It's New Zealand today. Who knows what the next bubble is uh, with, who, 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 that's, who that's with. Daniel Andrews claims Victoria isn't part of the bubble and has lashed the Commonwealth's border controls, citing this letter he sent to the Prime Minister yesterday. I urgently request your action to prohibit onward travel of passengers under the safe travel zone arrangements into Victoria. But the federal government claims the Premier's criticisms are merely a distraction and a charade. The Premier's own department had in fact given authorisation the only powers the state government has is welfare checks to make sure they follow the current restrictions. The Premier threatened to close our borders yesterday but has now backflipped and conceded it may actually be better to join the bubble and that way have more control over international arrivals. Christy Mayer, 7 News. Pubs and restaurants in Geelong are preparing for bigger crowds from tomorrow as regional restrictions are further eased. The Ring of Steel will be strengthened to ensure Melburnians stay away from country towns. David Browning had big plans for this space at the back of his Geelong coffee shop until the pandemic hit. We've got an event side uh, of this business which has dropped 100%. Finally, a reprieve in time to host a grand final party. Like other hospitality venues in regional Victoria, he can have 40 customers indoors and up to 70 outdoors. Absolutely, we're raring to go. Around the corner, the Pivotonian cinema will have to wait a little longer. There's not much that we can do about it. you just got to accept it and know that we're going to open. While much of regional Victoria is back in business, specialised beauty services are still not allowed. We still cannot open to treat your skin. It's honestly an absolute joke. Another win for Geelong. Cats fans can now have friends over on Saturday night to watch the grand final, but only two adults from one household. The easing, I, I just think it's going to be good for mostly just the service industry. It's nice, isn't it, that we can have some, we have some friends over and watch the footy with them. How much do you love the cats? So much. Richmond. Get out here. <laughs> Georgia Commons solely, 7 News. A woman has been killed when her car rolled in Beveridge, north of Melbourne. A male passenger had to be cut from the vehicle and airlifted to hospital with serious injuries. The crash happened just after 7 o'clock last night on Meriang Road. For the first time in nine years, two Victorian teams will feature in the AFL Grand Final. Geelong will face Richmond in the Gabba Decider after a comprehensive win over the Lions. It's an all-Victorian Grand Final. Two evenly matched powerhouse clubs, dusty against danger, the ingredients for a modern classic. Tom Stewart faces a nervous week. His wife due to give birth on the Tuesday after the Grand Final in Queensland. She's big, mate. She's big. Um, I think he might be your height, not mine. He's an absolute monster in there. Two unbelievable things. The child obviously comes first. Couldn't have scripted it any worse, really. I thought we um, got away with it by, you know, having him in early November. It's already the first grand final outside Victoria, the first at night. And in the history of football, never have both teams lost the first week and made the grand final. Another first, Patrick Dangerfield's never played in a grand final. 
Patrick Dangerfield and Gary Ablett are two of the best stories this week. Gary came back to Geelong for this exact situation, a shot at a third flag, and he spoke from the Cats' Southport hub this afternoon. I'm just so proud of the group, you know, everything that we've been through. Ablett will retire one of the greatest players in the history of the game, Dad Gary Senior, in the same discussion. Yeah, that's what we said in the box, just knock it over Gary. Come at the hour sort of stuff. My old man's been talking about making a comeback, so you never know. <laughs> Gary's son, Levi, there to watch last night, bravely fighting a rare degenerative disease. Yeah, it has been a difficult year, but I've, uh, I've, I've got an amazing family. Um, you know, Jordan has just been incredible. You know, without her, I, I wouldn't have been able to come up. So, um, yeah, one, one more to go and then uh, we can all celebrate together. Tom Brown, 7 News. And we're less than an hour away from tonight's Brownlow medal count. Hosts Jackie Felgate and Hamish McLaughlin join us now. Jackie, first to you, this is going to be a very different evening. It is indeed, Mitch. We're so excited. We're already socially distancing. It's allowed us to do a lot of different things that we wouldn't have otherwise tried. But it is 2020, so we do not know what's going to happen. We're looking forward to it very much. And Hamish Gill will actually be reading out the votes from the Gold Coast. Yeah, it's uh, too many McLaughlins, I think, even for <laughs> Mum tonight, Mitch. But the one thing I'd like to point out, I thought Jack would be nervous. An hour to go, and yeah. she's wearing some pretty casual kicks. It should be fun. Bobby Skilton, <laughs> he's on Zoom for the night, six different locations. Jack, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I was just a little cold, I'd like to point out, Mitch, but no, it's going to be an absolutely wonderful night. Should be fascinating. Thank you, Jackie and Hamish, and good luck Thanks, tonight. Mitch. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Watson joins us now, and Tim, six different locations. The winner could be anywhere around the country tonight. <laughs> Mitch, it is a strange feeling, that's for sure. Chief Football Reporter Mark Stevens is at the Metric on Stadium Function. Steve-O, can you please set the scene for us? Well, Tim, it's a huge night, isn't it? Spread across the country. A virtual Brownlow and the votes have arrived. Gil McLaughlin, the head of the AFL, will read the votes from Metricon Stadium. A group of Tigers uh, were here early. 24 players will be here tonight. 11 of those involved in the grand final, but certainly very low-key. No red carpet, if you like, and players arriving in vans. Now, Lockie Neal, the favourite, he's in Brisbane, along with another key def uh, contender, Christian Petrarca. And uh, Jack Steele, he's one of the favourites as well. He's had a great year with the Saints and he spoke a short time ago. Yeah, never, never sort of, um, I suppose, been in contention. But, um, and obviously we're at the Gold Coast at Metricon Stadium, so it's very strange. Not sure how, how the night's going to work, but it should be, should be a nice night. Now, a lot of other stars about to arrive very soon. A very exciting night. I'll be back in sport, Tim. Thanks, Steve-O. Also ahead, an incredible day at Mount Panorama. We'll have all the thrills and spills from the Bathurst 1000. And how about the Melbourne Vixens? Mitch, a win dedicated to everyone here in Victoria during lockdown. Well done to the girls. I'll be back a little bit later. The pride of Victoria, they are. Indeed. Thank you very much, Tim. We've got a new warning about dating apps tonight, and it's come from Victoria Police. Next, what they want young women to know about the potential dangers. Also, Jacinda Ardern's historic win in the New Zealand election. A fight between friends at a caravan park ends in tragedy. And the TV sports commentator who's just been elected, Lord Mayor of Perth. I was always just Chappelle, and then overnight I become Chappelle Corby an international drug smuggler. I've been locked away for a very long time. I want to change my life. There's no floor that won't be exposed. I fear open spaces. Master! I don't do heights. I don't do cold. I've experienced interrogation before. I fear it. I have to get through it. How come a court of law can prove you guilty and then you're saying that it wasn't me? SAS Australia starts tomorrow, 7.30 on 7. It lives at first light. And at the last dish, it lives wherever we push ourselves. When we pull together, it lives over the door. At the end of every paintbrush, at the start of every something, every beginning. It lives in going for a six, where a four would have done it. It lives after the dust has settled, after the sun has set, and the kids have gone to bed, where you break yourself before you break a promise. 
and knowing that even the smallest things can lead to something big. It lives in every square inch of this place. And because we live here, Can lives here. Farm app or Winx? Might and Power or Kingston Town? Who will you be backing in the Labroke's greatest ever Cox play? Watch the running of the race this Friday night at 8.30 on 7.2. Ladbrokes, back yourself. Is that your dog? It's the neighbour's dog. Will my insurance cover this? Budget Direct would have provided you with temporary accommodation for up to a year while they repaired it. Budget Direct. Insurance solved. At Coles, we're helping lower the cost of barbecue faves. Mix and save two selected items for $12. Like Coles Tasty Beef and Time Burgers and Coles No Added Hormone Beef Quick Cook Porterhouse Steaks. Coles. Value the Australian way. Eggs. They're bursting with protein, vitamins and omega-3s. Ideal for healthy Aussies every day. So, get cracking, Australia. Who are you backing in the Ladbrokes' greatest ever Cox Plate? Winx or Deep Impact? Kingston Town or Sunline? Watch the running of the race this Friday night on 7-2 or on your Ladbrokes app. Ladbrokes, back yourself. There's no place like a Simmons home for a next level staycation. You'll feel worlds away in a stunning new metro design with single story four bedroom homes from just 137,800. Upgrade your next staycation with Simmons today. Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles? A brawl at a caravan park has ended with one man fighting for life and another in custody. Police say the victim knew his attacker. The pair got into an argument at the Stall Caravan Park yesterday afternoon. A 37-year-old man was arrested. His victim was airlifted to hospital with life-threatening injuries. Victoria Police are worried not enough women are reporting cases of sexual assault by men they met online. They're urging victims to be brave and help get dating app predators offline and off the street. It was created to find love, but now it's feared Tinder is being used increasingly by sex predators. So much so, Victoria Police is appealing for victims of sexual assault to come forward, saying they're underreported, sometimes because of fear or embarrassment, or being unsure if an offence has occurred or if they'll be believed. Cyber experts say online dating tools make it even easier for predators to roam. Some people might, might not do it in the real world, but um, because of the anonymity, the predators or of offenders are always um, hiding behind the apps and try to find uh, suitable targets. Police want victims to know their attackers can be brought to justice. Last year, Tinder rapist Glenn Hartland was jailed for 14 years over horrific attacks on women he met online. I'm an Australian citizen and I stand for mercy. Police also wanted to reassure victims of sexual assault or rape that even if their attacker has blocked or deleted them, a criminal investigation can still be launched to track them down. The message we should, we should give out is that the more people report, uh, the more actions that the police will, 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 will take. Cassie Zervos, 7 News. Over the Tasman, Jacinda Ardern has cemented her status as one of the world's most popular leaders with a landslide election victory. The way the Prime Minister led New Zealand through the pandemic was seen as a major factor in her crushing win. She was the favourite going in, but she smashed expectations. Jacinda Ardern has been re-elected for a second term. I only have two simple words. Thank you. Winning 49% of the vote, it's the biggest victory for the Labor Party in more than 50 years. We will be a party that governs for every New Zealander. She campaigned on job creation and her management of COVID-19. There were referendums on legalising cannabis and euthanasia and a strong climate change policy. The progressive Prime Minister now has a clear mandate for her agenda. We will build back better from the COVID crisis. And that's the real test. New Zealand is in the depths of the worst recession in decades. Rebuilding the economy will require more than population. 
popularity and charisma. We will form government within the next two to three weeks. The COVID crisis has created uncertainty and anxiety within the community. Voters may fear a change of leadership. And that was clear in another election victory last night, right here in the nation's capital. Labor's ultra-progressive Andrew Barr, re-elected as the ACT's Chief Minister. <laughs> Jennifer Beshwati, 7 News. And Channel 7 sports presenter Basil Zemplis has been elected Lord Mayor of Perth. He will continue his television work. I've got an open mind to everything. I don't play favourites. I never have and I won't now. In his victory speech, Basil declared Perth the best city in the world and said his new council will be a united force. Sugar and fizzy drinks may not be the only food rotting your children's teeth. Researchers say popular staples that families eat every day can be just as damaging. The full details on this major new study later in 7 News. Jane Bunn joins us now. And, Jane, the late sunshine was most pleasant. <laughs> Mitch, it is lovely to see these pockets of sunshine after grey skies for much of the day. It was cool, though, in a southerly wind. The city only reached 15, Geelong 15 and a half. The airport was the chilliest, just 13. This week, we can expect a mostly dry Monday, just the odd light shower. From Tuesday through to Thursday, there's no wet weather at all. Then the week may finish wet. I'll have those details after sport, Mitch. Thank you, Jane. We'll see you then. Many Victorians have turned to gambling at home during lockdown and that has experts worried. Next, the signs online betting may be out of hand and why it can be harder to spot. Also a tough lesson for an L-plate driver in Melbourne's north. Donald Trump's battleground blitz trying to turn the election tide. And the unique way a British family sold their house to get to Australia. Time event. Together, they should be unbeatable. Australia's most formidable brainiacs. Who's brave enough to take them on? All at once. It's never happened before in Australia. For record money. $150,000. This is Australia's greatest quiz challenge. Could you beat them? I'll go 90 grand. Yeah, let's go to top. Yeah, I'm shaking. The new primetime event. Game on. Beat the Chasers. This November on 7. Hi, guys. Michael Weldon here. Tonight, we're cooking my spicy tomato and ricotta rigatoni. One of the things I love about cooking pasta is it pairs Italian tradition with incredible Aussie produce grown by our amazing farmers. Tonight, it's a very special what's for dinner and it's all about these beautiful cherry burst tomatoes. 10 cents from every Maddie's Month marked pack will go towards finding a cure for bone marrow failure. The first thing we need to do is get our rigatoni into the water. In the 10 minutes it takes to cook that pasta, we're going to make a really beautiful cherry tomato flavoured sauce. So, heat your pan up over a, a medium high heat and add in a good drizzle of olive oil. Now we're going to start out by chopping an onion and that can go straight into our pan. And we're going to slice up a couple of garlic cloves as well. And these guys can go in with our onion and a little pinch of salt in with them as well. And now we're going to really thinly slice some red chilli and then they can also go into your pan. And you just want to give that a really quick stir. Now, for these beautiful tomatoes. All we're going to do is cut these guys in half. So we're going to add them in in two steps. You're going to add one punnet now and one punnet just before you add your pasta. So just give them a gentle toss through that oil. So we're just going to chop the other half of our tomatoes. We just want these to cook down. They're going to soften and lose that plump shape. So what we want to do now is add in our second punnet of tomatoes. And now we're going to check on our pasta if it's ready to go. And what you want to do is transfer your pasta straight in to that sauce. Now, I've got some ricotta here as well. Just crumbled it, toss our pasta, our ricotta and our tomato -y sauce together. That looks perfect. Now, some basil, just really quickly and really roughly chopped. And we're going to add that in and then we're going to turn the heat off. A nice grating of parmesan. 
This delicious bowl of pasta can be on your table in under 15 minutes and you'll feed a family of four for under $20. I know you want the recipe, so make sure you check out Coles & Co for this one and loads of other amazing recipes. Guys, this pasta is what's for dinner. Make sure you've got some cherry tomatoes in your trolleys and happy eating. A young driver learned about road safety the hard way. The 20-year-old lost control of his car and hit a power pole, gas main, fire hydrant and shop window in Northcote around 4.30 this morning. The driver wasn't injured, but he's facing charges, including having an unroadworthy vehicle. Donald Trump is on a battleground blitz in America's heartland as he tries to defy the polls which show him trailing rival Joe Biden. But even the Democrats admit the race is much closer, closer in crucial states. In America's Midwest, Donald Trump tells a crowd his second term is in their hands. We win Wisconsin. We win the whole ballgame. Four years ago, voters here abandoned the Democrats to deliver a Trump presidency. And nowhere more than in the cornfields of Howard County, Iowa. Polls now predict a one-term presidency. But is the district that flipped further than any other for Donald Trump Ready to flip back? Better than most presidents, better than he, he, most. He's a business person and he looks at it that way. Not these farming brothers, nor the owner of Fat T's Cafe in town. He wants a rerun of 2016. I actually jumped up and down screaming very happily. Today's rallies defied local doctors who asked the president to scrap the events. President Trump's rallies endanger public health and they have become platforms for him to spread medically inaccurate information. The president now has little time to stir some new momentum in his campaign, just 16 days to the election, making it tougher. 23 million Americans have already voted. But in the Midwest, many of his original backers remain loyal to the Trump cause. In Janesville, Wisconsin, Tim Lester, 7 News. Gambling rates are at an all-time high as Victorians find ways to stay entertained at home during lockdown. Experts are urging friends to check in with mates, especially during the spring carnival. In 2020, betting has never been easier to access. Online gambling is so accessible, it's so convenient, it doesn't allow any pause. More money spent on bigger bets and problem gamblers the most likely to spend big. A lot of people did go online for the first time and it's often harder to see what's going on behind the screen. My gambling increased during lockdown, predominantly out of boredom. My gambling amount has increased a little but I balance that against not going out drinking or dining. Before the pandemic, 62% of gambling was done online. When lockdowns began, that rose to 78%. This Gamble Aware Week, timed with finals footy, is urging Aussies to check in with a mate and understand gambling behaviour. Talking about gambling problems has become very stigmatised. Researchers say for most, gambling is occasional and can provide a little entertainment. But for others, it can turn problematic and quickly get out of control. We're not saying don't gamble. What we're saying is really take stock of what you are gambling. It should only be a form of entertainment. Georgia Holland, 7 News. An explosion has destroyed a suburban shopping centre in the US. Three people were injured. It took all day for rescuers to search the rubble and confirm there were no more victims. And all houses start shaking, you know, without this bomb or anything like this, you know. It was very scary. A strong smell of gas was reported right before the explosion. And a gunman has opened fire on a policeman as he guarded government headquarters in Croatia. A bystander could be seen taking shelter as the 22-year-old sprayed bullets in a possible terrorist act. The officer was hit four times before a second policeman returned fire. The shot officer has survived. The gunman later took his own life. A British family's dream to live in Australia has come true after they raffled off their home in England. It was an unusual way to sell property during a pandemic, but worked thanks to their use of creative social media. 
It's a dream shared by many Brits, but few as bold as the Rowcroft family, mid-pandemic packing up one life for a new one in Australia. Just the lifestyle, the outdoors, the sunshine. Crocodiles, kangaroos. The move from Manchester to Brisbane was planned for years. Natalie and Brad had their five bedroom home on the market, but when COVID hit, it wouldn't sell. The market just completely stalled. So they took a gamble, raffling the house and throwing in the car with a deadline of 70 days to sell 200,000 tickets. We had a huge risk that if we didn't sell all the tickets, we wouldn't get a penny. They started a social media campaign. Skippy, oh Skippy. Using Facebook and TikTok to drive ticket sales. We are so excited to announce the winner. Entertaining a worldwide following during lockdown, achieving the goal in just 45 days. Property raffles are becoming increasingly popular in the UK, but are often unsuccessful. The Rowcrofts were the first to put their personal story out there. Anyone who thought the deal was too good to be true was simply invited to drive past. We're going to be committed. We're going to do it. We're going to get there. We'll do it any way possible. <laughs> in Manchester, Sarah Greenolch, 7 News. There's a new push for government-funded migraine medicine. Coming up, why it could be worth the investment. Also arrests over a shocking terror attack on a teacher in France. And a surprise warning about what causes tooth decay in children. Footy's night of nights like never before. Next up, the 2020 Brownlow Medal is live and exclusive to Seven. Who will take home the most prestigious prize in footy? And I declare the winner. The 2020 Brownlow Medal. Next up, only on Seven. Farlap or Winks? Might and Power or Kingston Town? Who will you be backing in the Labroke's greatest ever cops play? Watch the running of the race this Friday night at 8.30 on 7.2. Ladbrokes, back yourself. Right now, you can get the LDV T60 Auto for the price of the manual. Feels good, doesn't it? The LDV T60 4x4 Diesel Auto from just $28,990. Visit an LDV dealer today. Invest with Latrobe Financial, Australia's multi-award winning wealth manager. Returning a current variable rate of 4.5% reviewed monthly on a 12-month investment. Make your money work harder for you. Call 138010. 100 layers of flavour for that refreshing and delicious taste. Refreshing moments are just a tic-tac away. At Care Super, we understand it takes hard work to outperform. For us, it's about adapting to deliver superior performance. That's how we've consistently outperformed other super funds over the long term. Straight from the world's best plant scientists comes Scott's Performance Naturals, a range of soil and plant foods made from 100% natural ingredients to grow your plants twice as big. Scott's Performance Naturals. Incredible results, naturally. <laughs> At the end of a year of endless debacle, Ellie may realise she'd lost her sparkle. Who are you backing in the Ladbroke's greatest ever Cox Plate? Winks or Deep Impact? Kingston Town or Sunline? Watch the running of the race this Friday night on 7-2 or on your Ladbroke's app. Ladbroke's, back yourself.
Melbourne researchers are calling for migraine treatments to be listed on the pharmaceutical benefit scheme. A new study has found that one in ten Australians are suffering, forced to take time off work, costing the economy an estimated $8.4 billion. The Monash University authors want an antibody treatment that costs $850 a month listed on the PBS to ease the burden. The terrorist responsible for beheading a French school teacher asked students to point out the victim before launching his horrific attack. The 18-year-old Chechen refugee was shot dead by police. Nine suspects were arrested, including his grandfather, parents and brother. The United Kingdom's Public Health Service is trialling the use of drones to deliver critical COVID-19 test samples, as well as protective equipment. The technology aims to cut delivery times and also limit the amount of human contact. We know sugar and fizzy drinks can rot children's teeth, but a major new study has found they're not the only culprits. Researchers say popular foods like white bread, white rice and even noodles can be just as damaging. They're common household staples and kids can't get enough. A diet high in refined carbs is already known to be bad for their health, but what's it doing to their teeth? A recent study in New Zealand examined the dental records of 4,000 children. It also looked at what they ate and their dental hygiene. It found refined starches like white bread, white rice and noodles were just as damaging as the usual culprits. I think we don't realise um, the impact it has. Refined carbohydrates and of course refined starches are essentially sugar. Dentists say they're alarmed by what they're seeing. One in three children is showing decay by the age of five and it's the hidden sugars doing a lot of the damage. You go to the supermarket and most foods have some level of sugar in them. Around 15,000 Australian children between the ages of five and nine are admitted to hospital each year needing dental treatment and that number's growing. It's a trend public health experts are desperate to reverse and they're urging parents to pay close attention to what their kids eat. Look for whole grain uh, sources of carbohydrate. Elspeth Hussey, 7 News. Sports next with Tim Watson. And Tim, we're all set for a dazzling night with a difference for the Brownlow. <laughs> yes, Mitch, it will be different, but it will be a night to remember. We have all bases covered and we'll cross live to the Gold Coast and Brisbane to hear from the stars. Gary Ablett not done yet. The Geelong champion determined to go out a winner against the Tigers next week. Bathurst bites hard even for the best. All the action from Mount Panorama as Holden says farewell in style. And the Melbourne Vixens reign supreme in a super netball thriller. Lee Matthews is in. That means we've got Gil McLaughlin, Eddie Betts. It's going to be a great grand final show. Great. Do you lock away Mike Brady? Couldn't get him, Mick. But don't worry, I've got something just as good. OK. What do you think? I like it. Yes. Mike Brady might not be in, but the guest list is huge. The Front Bar Grand Final Edition, Thursday, 8.30 on 7. Does it do one day in September? No. Farm app or Winks? Might and Power or Kingston Town? Who will you be backing in the Labrokes' greatest ever cops play? Watch the running of the race this Friday night at 8.30 on 7.2. Ladbrokes, back yourself. As part of BHP's new training and local business support program, BHP has announced a $780 million investment to support new apprenticeships, training and business opportunities across Australia over the next five years. Dylan Turquoise, the new fragrance for her by Versace. Discover your new signature scent at Maya. Maya, my store. Oh, should I? With great flavour and 50% less fat, it's easy to say, oh yes. 
Mm, go on. Say yes to new Smith's Oven Baked. Backing in the Ladbrokes' greatest ever Cox Plate. Winks or Deep Impact? Kingston Town or Sunline? Watch the running of the race this Friday night on 7 2 or on your lap. This sport report is brought to you by the new Toyota Hilux. Awaken your unbreakable. Welcome back. It's a Brownlow medal like we've never seen before with players spread out across six locations around the country. Mark Stevens and Tom Brown are watching with the players who are still in Queensland tonight. And Steve-O, to you first, you're on the Gold Coast where Gil will be reading the votes tonight. That's right, Tim. He's in a room behind me rehearsing now. What a big night it will be. A strange night. So many players in six different locations. It's quite fitting that Richmond superstars Trent Cochin and Dustin Martin arrived in a red Jeep. Certainly very Gold Coast in a very different year. A few cats have arrived. Cam Guthrie's here. Tom Liberatore turned up in a beige suit. A little bit of Richie Benno action. There's superstars everywhere around the country. But Trent Cochin's one of the biggest names this week. The captain of the Tigers. And he spoke a short time ago. Was They're impressive. They've always been a, a great team. Um, this year's been the same as the last few. They're, they're an outstanding outfit. They're well structured. Uh, they've got some great players um, and some really good role players, but we're looking forward to it. We've obviously had some fantastic battles with Geelong over the last few years as well, so uh, out of both of what our norm is, um, it's exciting. It's great for the Queensland Government. Um, they've obviously been so supportive in, in keeping the season rolling. Now, yeah, Cochin, of course, was talking about Geelong and their superstars have just arrived a couple of minutes ago. Selwood in runners, very casual. Dangers got a little bit of a Richie Benno action as well in the beige suit and Tom Hawkins looking very casual. This will be a huge night, of course. Lockie Neal, the favourite. We'll all unfold here as Gil McLaughlin reads the votes at a very different situation at Metricon Stadium, Tim. It is. Thanks, Steve. Now to Tommy Brown at the Gabber and Tom. That's where the Brownlow favourite will be watching tonight. Tim, the Lions dressed up here at the Gabber and it's where Lockie Neal is expected to be presented with the award, providing he wins sight. Neal arriving with his partner Jules just a short time ago. The Lions here tonight, as is Christian Petrarca. Nat Fife will present the award virtually from Perth and there's two Brownlows here on the off chance that Petrarca is a joint winner. We spoke to Neal and Petrarca a short time ago. In a weird way, I'm still pretty flat, but I know what a big occasion this is as well, so I'm sure once... I get in there and I'm around my teammates again and um, the count starts. Uh, it'll be exciting and, and I'll be very nervous. You don't really play footy for individual accolades. Um, obviously I felt like I had a really good pre-season both mentally and physically and felt like um, you know, I took another step in my pre-season and got myself really fit and that really translated to the games. I'm told Petrarca hasn't come with a pre-prepared speech. You never know his chances, Tim. Taylor Adams is here from the Collingwood Footy Club. The Giants now believe that Jeremy Cameron is being chased by Collingwood. And this was Taylor's response on Collingwood's potential interest a short time ago. You know, if we're lucky to have an opportunity to, to, to snare him, you know, I hope the club goes all out and um, does their best to get a player like Jeremy. He's, he's a super player. Obviously, I played alongside him. Um, at the Giants and yeah hopefully you know someone someone like him would, would really straighten us up in the forward line. Tim it's a unique night but Lockie Neal expected and it's hard to predict the result expected to be presented with the award here later tonight Tim at the Gabba. Thanks Tom. Retiring Geelong superstar Gary Ablett says he has no second thoughts about retiring after Saturday night's grand final against Richmond. Ablett was best on ground in last night's dominant 40-point preliminary final win over the Lions and is determined to go out on a high. Gary Ablett returned to Geelong to win a premiership. His dream of capping off his stunning career with a third flag well and truly alive. Ablett from 55. Ablett. The old legs are still got a bit in them. I've been blessed through, throughout the last 90 years just to play the game for that long. Um, I've been able to achieve so much in my career, so I'm, uh, I'm hoping I can go out in a high. The 36-year-old dual Brownlow medalist concedes his body can't do what it used to, and Saturday night will be his 357th and final game. Uh, no second thoughts. This uh, the game doesn't get easier. I think there's always a bit of self-doubt. Um, 
you know, it's not an easy game. And my body hasn't been able to do, um, you know, what I could do in, in my younger years. In February, Chris Scott questioned Richmond's dominance. With the greatest respect to them, they're not Hawthorne in the um, multiple premiership years in a row. I don't think, I don't think they're Geelong or St Kilda um, or Collingwood through that sort of 2009-10 period either. I think it's a lot more even than that. But eight months is a long time in football. But they've clearly been the best team in the comp for a period of time. Six weeks ago, Richmond beat Geelong by 26 points, but that was at Metricon Stadium. The Gabba is Geelong's home away from home, and the Cats hope that could be an advantage against the Tigers. They certainly favoured Metricon and played their semi-final there. But if, yeah, if, if we're relying on the ground um, to get over the Tigers, we'll be in trouble. Sean Sauby, 7 News. Holden have tasted Bathurst 1000 glory one last time in their Mount Panorama farewell. Shane Van Gisbergen taking it out in tandem with great Garth Tander, while Supercars champ Scott McLaughlin finished fifth. Under many dark clouds, Australia's sacred day of motorsport had to go on. Great start by McLaughlin, who drops into position over Davison. On lap 33... Wicklow has made a massive mistake! A shock ending for one of the last two factory Holdens. Is this place you, you know, you've got to have respect for if it doesn't abite you. Rain teased enough for Scott McLaughlin to slide. With brakes smoking hot, they jostled for 45 laps before two Brad Jones cars collided. This race means so much to him. McLaughlin was stranded out of his car while co-driver Tim Slade fell behind. Shane Van Gisbergen went for home. The champ finally took his seat, charging from 16th with 46 to go. A monumental battle to the end. Van Gisbergen led Cam Waters into an all-or-nothing duel. Get your elbows out if you need them. Holden v Ford, Kiwi v Aussie. You got this. Until two crashes with nine to go brought them all together for a six-lap sprint. They didn't make one. Yeah, that's a heavy whack. It all came down to three laps, but no one could catch this flying Kiwi. Beautiful job, Van Gisbergen. Finally, the crowning moment for a car racing prodigy. That Shane Van Gisbergen <laughs> takes victory at Mount Panorama. <laughs> and one last time, that Holden Lion roared on the mountain again. Great way to send out Holden. Fitting the times, no fans to celebrate with them in pit lane. At Mount Panorama, Matt Carmichael, 7 News. Victoria has already had a win in the Queensland hubs. The Melbourne Vixens crowned Super Netball champions, defeating the West Coast Fever 66-64 in a thriller. A win dedicated to Victorians who've been in lockdown. The one trophy that has eluded them is now theirs. We really hope that you guys back home are, um, you know, we've brought some light to you guys. We know that it's been really, really hard for you and we can't wait to get home. The Vixens spent 93 days away from home. An incredible performance and congratulations to the girls. And that is a whole lot harder than it seems to Mitch. <laughs> yes, indeed. A brilliant performance. Didn't think it was going to get off the ground, but well done to the ladies. Well done indeed. Jane Bunn is next with the forecast, a Vixens fan too. Jane, how does it look tomorrow? <laughs> oh, Mitch, there is the odd light shower and long breaks of sunshine. A mostly dry Monday. The details are next. Tomorrow night, you better be ready for it. You're going to suffer. SAS Australia starts tomorrow on 7. Yeah, I'd like a 3% savings rate. How? Well, it's for 18 to 29-year-olds with a choice every day and a Westpac Life savings account. That's me. Simply grow your savings balance each month. Make five debit card purchases on your Choice Everyday account and you could earn up to a massive 3% per annum variable interest. Nice. Get more out of your savings with Westpac. about this back in Chicago.
Shut up and take my money. Melbourne, fill your homes with light and love. Beacon's new summer collection is here with 30% off your second item. Shop online with 24-hour delivery or three-hour pickup. We're open 7.30 for trade. Great taste. Just add bubbles. Pepsi Max for SodaStream. As part of BHP's training and local business support program, we are pleased to announce the BHP Apprenticeship Pledge to create 3,500 new apprenticeships and training positions across Australia over the next five years. At Optus, we believe in the amazing potential of 5G. That's why we're now offering a 5G price match guarantee on 5G phones. It starts with yes. Lockie Neal, very, very short for the Brownlow medal at $1.25. We've got him winning by five votes, so it's Lockie Neal's Brownlow, but he's too short. So there's some other things you can bet on, like the three-vote game. It's going to take you to round one. Patrick Cripps up against the Tigers. The Tigers didn't have anybody stand out. They lost the game, the Blues, but 31 disposals, 10 clearances for Patrick Cripps in that one. And, of course, you can bet live on the Brownlow. Good luck with your punting. Gamble responsibly. Footy's Night of Nights like never before. Next up, the 2020 Brownlow Medal is live and exclusive to Seven. Who will take home the most prestigious prize in footy? And I declare the winner, the 2020 Brownlow Medal. Next up, only on Seven. Hello again. Pockets of sunshine return to Melbourne this afternoon and we'll see more of that this week. We began the day on 11 and only rose to 15 in a moderate southerly wind. The past few days rain added up for eastern suburbs but not as much for the west. Most had between 10 and 25 millimetres. There was 10 in the city, 11 in Geelong, 16 in Preston and Scoresby and nearly 30 out at Coldstream. At first this morning it was cloudy for much of the state. Then sunshine returned to the north and pockets of that sun in the south. With a southerly wind, the best we could do out there today was a top of 21 in Wodonga. The rain system delivered in the north and east of the state, but not so much in the southwest. A few highlights were 22 in Swan Hill. That is a month's worth of rain in that part of the world. The biggest falls were about the eastern ranges up in through here, over 100 on the peaks. The southeast did well, 20 to 40 across Gippsland. There is minor flooding in the Kiwa, ovens and King Rivers and Seven and Castle Creeks. The low that brought that rain moved over the Tasman Sea, while the attached front and trough brings thunderstorms to the eastern states. High pressure is settling in here to dominate this week, but there is one small trough tomorrow. It is only small, it won't bring much, just the odd light shower to the south tomorrow. We are generally dry for a few days after that, thanks to that high overhead, but a trough dips into the northeast and it may bring storms there. Then there may be another tropical moisture fed trough or low and that is due at the end of the week, possibly lasting into the weekend. It could be another big one. I'll keep you updated on this during the week. Around the nation tomorrow, lots of sunshine for Adelaide and Perth. There is the chance of showers and thunderstorms in both Brisbane and Sydney overnight. They clear out in the morning. But the next trough is due in Brisbane on Saturday. So the grand final does have the risk of thunderstorms. Now it is still six days away. I'll have more later in the week. To Victoria, patchy morning fog, localised light showers on and south of the ranges. Cool and mostly cloudy with that. But north of the divide, warmer with a mix of sun and cloud. Closer in and there are light showers passing through southeastern suburbs, but the rest are mostly dry with some areas of sunshine. And that's how it looks in inner suburbs. Long sunny breaks, a top of 16, just the slight chance of a light shower.
To the eight-day outlook, Tuesday looks absolutely lovely. We rise to 18, the winds are light southerly, sunshine all through the morning and lots of sunshine in the afternoon. Dry on Wednesday as well and all through the day on Thursday. Now here is the risk of this next rain system. It may hit Melbourne, it may not. At the moment, somewhere between 5 and 20 millimetres is the most likely situation happening there. Then there may be another one early next week. But tomorrow, 16 long sunny breaks, just the odd light shower passing through. That's for the city pitch. Jane, we know you can forecast the weather. What do you like on Brownlow <laughs> medalists? Oh, you know what? There's one name that is coming to mind for me. It would be Jack Steele. Go Saints. Oh, I like it. St Kilda like influence, it. obviously. <laughs> I'll stick my neck out and go Lockie Neal. Mm. Uh, Tim, how about you? Well, I think Lockie Neal will win, but my sentimental favourite is the 32-year-old from Port Adelaide, Travis Boak. He's been around for a long time. This is the best season I think he's ever played in AFL. And what about Paddy Dangerfield in his Richie Benno beige suit? <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> so, or Miami Vice for me. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. We're in for a great night. Anyway, yeah. and that's the way it is this Sunday, the 18th of October. Thanks for your company. For now, from the Seven News team, enjoy the Brownlow. Good night.